Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the Dark Table from A to Z series. My name is Hal and today we're going to be discussing the Denoise module. In particular, the module is called Denoise Profile and that is because it's adapted to the noise profiles of specific camera sensors. This profiling allows the denoising algorithm to be adjusted and produce an even more smooth image. So, better effect, better denoising of the image. Check whether your camera model is supported at the Darktable website. If it isn't, you can as well generate your own noise profile and then upload it to the Darktable website so that the development team can include it in the next release. For more information, you can go to the Darktable website and check the camera support page. I'll put the link in the description below. And that is the first setting in the module, the profile. It says here, found match for ISO 100. And if I click on the drop-down list, I can change the selection if I thought that it was incorrect. It automatically detected the camera and it is supported. It is correct, so I'm going to leave it. Next, we have the mode and the denoise profile module supports two modes, non-local means and wavelets. For both algorithms, there is a auto mode and an advanced mode or a manual mode. Non-local means averages each pixel with the surrounding pixels in the image. And then the weight of each pixel in the average process will depend on the similarity with the neighborhood of the pixel being denoised. That means noise will be different from the pixels around it, so the average of the pixels around it will override the noise in layman's terms. Or at least that's how I understood it. The wavelets, as its name suggests, works in the wavelet domain. The wavelets technique is used to separate the image into distinct layers with different level of details to work on those separately. Just like the contrast equalizer module that we've discussed previously. This allows us to adjust the strength of denoising depending on the coarseness of the noise in the image, so depending on the detail. You can either independently control the luminance and chroma noise or have an independent noise control for each of the RGB channels. A big difference between the wavelet and the non-local means is that waveless is less resource intensive than non-local means, so if that's a concern for you, you're better off using wavelets. The white balance adaptive transform checkbox here tells the algorithm to adapt to the white balance because the white balance amplifies the RGB channels differently to change the color and adjust the white balance. That means that each channel will have different noise levels. The only thing we need to remember is that if you create another denoise instance, this one should only be enabled on the first one and disabled on all subsequent ones. Now let's go through the control sliders. We'll start with the auto ones because they're easier. In non-local means auto we have central pixel weight. This one controls the amount of details that should be preserved by the denoising algorithm. Moving it to the right will reduce the amount of luma denoising. That means that the denoising will primarily be happen against chroma. The adjust auto set parameters, it automatically adjusts all the other parameters on the current denoising algorithm by using one single slider. The higher the value, the more denoising will happen. A good rule of thumb is to set it to the same amount of stops that you added in the exposure module. Next we have strength which is used to fine-tune the strength of the denoising. However, if you got more denoising, you'll have less details. So you'll have to find the settings that you like the best. The more you push it, the less noise you'll have and less details as well. 
in wavelets auto we get two channels the first one is for luminance and the second one is for chroma or color you can use those separately to adjust the denoising based on the details pushing a node towards smooth will increase the denoising effect on those details so on the fine details here but will decrease the details and lowering it will have the opposite effect you can select the effect that you like based on the detail level as we can see it goes from coarse to fine and you can do that for the color or for the luminance the adjust auto set parameters and strength sliders work the same as in the non-local means auto if you prefer you can use the RGB mode and that allows you to change the denoising effects based on details but then per channel or on all channels simultaneously if you, if you like as well. Let's have a look at the advanced sliders. The first thing to note is that we lose the adjust auto set parameter slider. However, the settings are automatically set in the advanced mode to what you've chosen in the auto mode. So if you'd like, you can go to the auto mode, adjust auto set parameters slider, and then go back to the advanced mode and the settings will be automatically changed for you. The first slider is patch size. And this controls the size of the patches being matched when deciding which pixels to average. Higher values would re will reduce the noise even further, but at a risk of smoothing out the edges, so less detail. The search radius controls how far away from a pixel the algorithm will try to find similar patches. Increasing the value will produce better results for very noisy images, but it's quite resource intensive. For that reason, the manual suggests that it's better to use the scattering slider. The scattering slider is similar to the search slider, as in it controls how far from the pixel the algorithm will try to find similar patches. The difference is this one does it without increasing the number of patches considered, which means that the processing time will stay about the same. Increasing this value will reduce coarse grain noise but as well will smooth local contrast. You'll find out that in all of these settings, it's a matter of balance between reducing more noise and preserving more details. So the trick is to find the correct combination that will reduce sufficient amount of noise while preserving as much details as possible. Next, we have preserve shadows. A lower value will denoise the shadows more however you will lose again more details in the shadow the bias correction is more or less related because you can use it to correct any color cast that appears in the shadow you increase the value if the dark shadows appear too greenish or you decrease it if they appear too purplish let's play around with the settings and see how that affects the image put it on 100% disable the noise module completely and then enable it and let's see first let's increase the patch size and then search radius back and see if the scattering makes better effect let's see if we can get oh. I had to push it quite 
quite far but now the difference is quite perceptible of course we directly see that we've lost some details let's see how it is here it's acceptable well, there weren't a lot of there you go a lot of the details were lost in the leaves of course what we're trying here is just to show how the module works otherwise we'd use a mask to disable it on the flower and keep the effect to the background okay and the last mode is wavelets advanced in wavelets the only difference between the auto and the advanced modes are those two sliders instead of the adjust auto set parameters slider that we have in the auto mode we get the preserve shadows and bias correction sliders which work exactly the same as we've just discussed that's pretty much it for the denoise module it's a good idea to start with an auto setting and then fine tune it in advanced I hope that you found this video interesting. If you have any corrections, requests or suggestions, then please leave them in the comments below and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.